You ready? Go. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, should one wear a jacket or hat or gloves during the winter? And uh, because if, if one wears a hat or a jacket, they're creating aversion towards the cold. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly that potential, and I think certainly that that's a real that's a real thing that really happens. Um, and so, to some extent, we have to we have to deal with that. We, when I was here 15 years ago in this same monastery, this was where I spent my first year as a monk, and I had to go to university every day. I was still in, even as a monk, I was in university and it was darn cold even before that after I started meditating I came back to Canada and went back to university as a lay person in this same monastery and I remember dealing with the cold I had this funny situation where I was to meet the abbot the head monk and we were going to Toronto together. And so we made an appointment to meet at a specific street corner at a specific time, 4 o'clock, I think it seems to me. It was 4 o'clock. And at 4 o'clock, I was there waiting. You know, if, if this is the corner, I was here. And I waited, and I could see the intersection, you know, and I waited for a half an hour getting colder, it was f freezing, and I was like quite you know, g quite um, getting quite sick as a result. But I had this interesting experience where just simply by being mindful I could lose the sense of cold, you know, by, by not acknowledging cold, cold. The shivering would stop and, and the pain and the, the upset of course would stop. But also the cold would just sort of disappear. And it would enter into this sort of you know, good state where the, the body was comfortable. Of course it didn't last and I ended up getting <laughs> I was quite frustrated. And then I was like, this is crazy. And so I started walking back to the, towards the monastery. And, I'm just, and I, got, I walked to the intersection and I, tur I looked over and he was around the corner waiting in his car. And he was just as frustrated as me, or probably not as much, because he was sitting in his warm car. But he had been sitting in his warm car for the past half hour, so we both were there on time. And he scolded me, and I scolded him. And it taught us a lesson in you know, looking around the corner. Um, but definitely that's part of it, and, and that was something I realized over time, is that you, you're part of our... Aversion to cold is just that, an aversion. But that's not the only reason why you wear a hat, I mean, and, and, and a coat and so on. There, there's a difference between being cold and making yourself sick. You can't get sick from the cold, but as I understand it, it reduces your immune system and, and can do that quite severely to the point where it, you're quite likely to catch whatever virus is going around. You're quite... You know, it's, 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 it increases your odds of getting sick, which can be a hindrance to your practice, etc., etc. Of course, you won't be able to teach. You wouldn't, wouldn't be able to study, for example, when you're sick. So there's a lot of, there's quite de some detriments, detrimental effects um, to the cold. You know, I mean, here in Canada, you can't just go out in the cold. You'll get really sick. So I was wondering, how do you decide when to wear a hat? Well, you should wear a hat as a matter of course. I mean, wearing a hat doesn't, in and of itself, cultivate an aversion to cold. Um, aversion cultivates aversion. It, it, it's habitual. So if you uh, if you don't change the habit, it will it will increase. You know, aversion will create further aversion. So by noting, you know, upset, upset, dislike, disliking, disliking, you know, 
that's what gets rid of the aversion or when you feel cold saying cold cold if you never feel cold because you're always wearing a hat that's not going to create aversion to cold it's only when you feel the cold and you allow yourself to to dislike it that's what's cultivating the aversion now the disliking of it um, is what leads you to put often leads you to put the hat on but it's not the putting the hat on that's the problem it's the encouraging of the disliking so, so should you determine to wear the hat before going outside so otherwise uh, if you go outside and you realize it's cold then you put on the hat then you're creating a vis aversion to the cold so, no no it's not because you put on the hat it's because you dislike the cold it's the actual disliking that becomes habitual so if you say to yourself, cold, cold, and there's no disliking, you say, well, here I am outside, let me put on the hat. It has nothing to do with necessarily with aversion. Okay. So, good question, but the mechanics of it are, are, are otherwise. Uh, it, it's habit, it's about what forms a habit. So, it's not the, the, it seems like that, it seems like by putting on the hat you become more averse to it, and, and I've often said sort of that sort of thing, but Technically speaking, that's not what happens. So this is why when you feel pain, it's not a problem to adjust. The adjusting, the moving your body, the shifting is not the problem. But what is pushing you to, to, to move, that's the problem. And so we encourage you not to move. We encourage you to instead try to learn about it. It doesn't mean that the actual moving is causing the, the aversion. So, uh, in in certain cases, there there'd be no reason. You know, for example, when you feel pain, there's no reason to move. So, in most cases, you don't have to move. Here, in this case, even though um, part of it is, is, even though there is the potential to put on the hat out of aversion, there's also the reason to put out the hat, put on the hat, to not get sick. So. Also to not get distracted, because it can be very difficult to focus if you've got a headache from the cold or, or um, you know, cold, we don't function very well at, at sub-zero temperatures, right? So, uh, and then as soon as you go inside, you get a huge headache, and, and, and it's not a very good result, especially going from hot to cold, it's, it's quite hard on the body, and that's not useful. No, it's not helpful to do that. So, I mean, these are excuses you can give. It's not always the case, and sometimes it's actually useful to experience all that, the headaches and so on and so on. So there's no hard and fast rule. For the most, you know, for a hardcore meditator, you can put up with it. Mahasi Sayada talks about a monk. Uh, in one of the commentaries, I think, um, who meditated on, in the snow. You know, he just did sitting meditation while it was snowing around him, which, of course, we hear about with Tibet, Tibetans and so on. Meditating in the snow. I've got that picture of me. It's like quite a nice picture sitting in, in my parents' patio furniture with the snow coming deep, and I was sitting with my legs crossed and snowshoes, wearing snowshoes. That about sums it up. You can do it. I mean, it was to me, it was sort of an experiment on my on my own part to to just experience that. You know, here I'm going to experience in monks' robes, which are not very very much protection, but um, to just go through it. And it's quite quite freeing, really, to not have to avoid. So certainly there's that. But wearing a hat, there's nothing wrong with it. It can be quite useful. I think there's many reasons to wear it. I mean, to, but it's not like, it's certainly not something you should obsess over, I have to wear a hat, etc. I don't think you have to obsess about not wearing a hat. Just to, you understand that you can at times go without.